Okay, so how much do you know about functions? Well, hopefully you know a lot about functions. It's certainly critical that you understand functions if you're at the Algebra 1 level, Algebra 2 level, definitely like at the pre-calculus level. So what I have here for you is a nice, lovely little pop quiz about functions. And here we have a representation of a function. And the question is, what is the domain of the inverse function? What is the domain of the inverse function? So hopefully you understand the nature of this question. If you are kind of lost already, stick around for a couple minutes because you're going to learn something very important about functions. But when you study algebra, uh, typically one of the things you need to know how to do is if we have some sort of function here, and if this function has an inverse, you want to determine what uh, the inverse is or find the inverse function. And you need to know the definition of this and all the properties and characteristics of a function and inverse. But this is a huge topic in algebra. But let's just see how well you can do with this problem. So if you think you can uh, determine the domain of the inverse, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct result here in just one second. And then I'm going to walk through and explain this problem step by step. This is very, very important, again, for those of you who are at that first year and beyond algebra level. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping students learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Maybe you failed math before in the past. Maybe you hate math and you're like, ah, it's my worst subject. I just, um, I just have to get to this math class. Listen, I totally get it. You don't have to love math. But if you have to take math, you might as well be successful. Okay. And what I've found through the years is that students who don't like math generally don't like math because... Um, they're frustrated with math. You know, they're not doing well with math. So let me tell you the three things you need to be great at math. First, you got to be willing to work hard. So if you're not willing to put in the work, well, then no one's going to be able to really help you to be successful in math. Right? There is no shortcuts. And if someone promises you, hey, if you do this and that, uh, you can you know, be successful in math without doing the work, well, just don't run away from that person or <laughs> thing. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need encouragement. OK, and this is especially important for those of you that struggle with math. You want to have some sort of assurance that if you do work hard, that you're actually going to get a return on your investment. And I'm telling you, don't give up hope. OK, uh, work hard because you can be successful. But you need this third component. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. You need great math instruction. See, math is a very technical subject. I could explain this particular problem right here in a very technical way. But guess what? If I do that, uh, a lot of students, probably most, are not going to get it because, you know, we don't want to be taught like in a textbooky type of way, right? I like to teach math, explain things that all people that all people can understand and like, okay, without watering down the concepts. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, or teacher certification, something that has math on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students are, are not taking adequate notes. Okay, some students don't take any notes, all right, but most students take like average notes. You know who takes above average notes? Those students that get grades like this. So if you want to help yourself immediately start um, improving in math, start focusing on taking better notes, okay? But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we're talking about functions, we're talking about domain, we're talking about we're going to be talking about range, and this is a subset uh, of kind of a broader topic in algebra called functions and relations, and you need to know a lot about functions and relations. You're going to see that word functions everywhere in mathematics. It has a very specific uh, definition that goes with it. Okay, but let's go ahead and uh, just answer this question right now. The domain. Uh, of the inverse of this particular function. Okay, so I'm laying out right here. Here is a function. Let's just call this function f. Okay, what is the domain of 
the inverse function of this function. Okay, well, let's go ahead and show you the answer right now. Okay, so the domain of the inverse function. Now, this kind of can get kind of confusing, right? You're like, okay, you're, you're talking about domain, you're talking about inverse. I don't even understand what these means. Well, I'll explain all this in a second. But the domain of the inverse function of this particular function is the set 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so if you answer this question and basically got 4, 5, or 6, well, listen, you understand, or at least I think you understand, domain and range and functions and inverse functions with this very basic representation of a function. So, very, very good. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars to celebrate your success with some level of understanding about functions and inverse functions, etc. Okay, so let's get into this, all right? We're talking about domain, we're talking about functions and inverse, etc. I can't possibly teach you everything you need to know about what a function is or relation is, domain, range, everything else, but I'll try to kind of quickly give you an overview just so we can uh, get to understanding the nature of this question and how we answer this correctly. All right, so here's the deal. So I'm telling you, right, this right here is a function. So what is a function? Very basically, okay, a function, you can kind of think of it as a function machine in mathematics where we plug in an X. And if I really wanted to kind of be fancy here, I could have put an X and Y here. Matter of fact, I really probably should have done that. But anyways, not net total necessary, but let's put an X and Y. So if I plug in an X into this particular machine, okay, if I plug in an input value into my machine, I'm going to get one and only one output value. So here, okay, the input values in a um, function is what we call the domain. Okay, this is the set of all input values. This is what we plug into the function, and this is the respective um, uh, output. Okay, we call that the range. So, for example, in this particular function, if I plug in a one, okay, into my nice little lovely function, what am I going to get out? I'm going to get out a four. Okay, so one is part of the uh, what we call the domain. The entire set of all the input functions that you can put into a function is called the domain and the respective output set is called the range. So this is this basic 101 um, overview of a function. Now functions are a subset of something called a relation. So if something is not a function, it's simply a relation. But let's just quickly um, kind of really hone in here on your understanding of a function, okay? So the deal is with the function, for every input, every input value, every x has one and only one y value, or uh, every input has one and only one input, or I'm sorry, uh, output value. So every input has one and only one output value. So every time I plug in a, a one into this machine, I'm going to get a four. Okay. Now. What happens if I said, uh, is this a function, and I kind of drew an arrow this way, where it went from 1 to 4 and 1 to 5? Well, that's saying that, hey, sometimes when I plug a 1 into this machine, sometimes a 5 will pop out. Okay, Sometimes a 4 will pop out, sometimes a 5 will pop out. This is not the definition of a function. Okay, So this would not be a function. It would be a relation. Okay, Remember, again, every input value, every x has only one and only one uh, output value or y. Okay, so I'm taking my uh, taking a time here to really emphasize, uh, you know, these concepts because you need to know, uh, you know, um, this level or you actually need to know more about uh, functions and relations. Just, but, you know, basically this is a quick overview. So, in fact, this is a function. Okay, it is a function because if you look here, every x or every input goes to one and only one output. So we could say yes and confidently, this is a function. So if the question was, does this represent a function? Okay, so I could have thrown another thing here. Is this a function? Uh, yes, the answer is indeed yes. So it's not like a, you know, I'm not trying to trick you here. Okay, all right, so that is a function. Now, the question here is this, does this function have an inverse? Okay, well, that's a whole nother deal. So here's the deal, okay? We're talking about something called relations. That's a big topic. Now, some relations are functions, okay? Some relations are functions like this, 
and some functions, not all functions, have an inverse to them. Okay, so this is kind of crazy, right? So they're like, oh, here's a function. Well, it must have an inverse. Not necessarily so, okay? Not every single function has an inverse. So the question is, what is the domain of uh, the inverse function for this particular function? Well, first we need to determine, does this function have an inverse? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. How can we determine that? Well, first of all, let's just kind of um, uh, make sure you can understand here or you do understand, we're talking about the domain and range. So typically, the domain is uh, is the set of all x values that we plug into a function, uh, and then our all of our output values, something like, let's say we had y equals 2x plus 1. Here's what we input. Uh, we plug in x's here. Okay, this is our input, and then we get out here this respective output. Okay, this y, all right, is typically... Um, f of x is equal to y. We use this notation in terms of functions. So this right here, uh, we could represent as f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, again, our x variable is what we call the independent variable, and the y variable is the output variable. Basically, this is x and this is y, because I want you to think of these respective inputs and outputs as, as points, as ordered pairs that we can plot on the xy plane. Okay, so here's one and here's four, okay, our input and output. So this represents the point, the xy point one, four. Okay, here, this two, five represents the uh, coordinate two, five, and three, six is the point three, six on the xy plane. Okay, so this particular um, uh, format, what we're looking at here, is what we call a mapping, okay, a mapping diagram for a function. And hopefully you've seen this before. If you haven't, uh, well, you know, this is a whole nother, um, you know, uh, topic of in and of itself, but it's very, very common to study functions, etc., by using a mapping diagram. Okay, but anyways, these are these points here, okay, um, are the points that we can kind of visually, graphically see this function. But let's go ahead and take a look at these points of this particular function graphically. Okay, so here we had the point 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. Let's just pl uh, plot these on our xy plane. So let's suppose we I said, hey, I have um, a relation with these points here. Does this represent a function? Now, we already discussed using a mapping diagram that it does, but you could also use a quick visual test called the vertical line test. And basically that states that if you draw a vertical line anywhere through uh, this, um, uh, through the, to the graph, if it only crosses through once, okay, it is a function. So let's just uh, suppose real quick, and I'm kind of giving you a good little um, uh, kind of crash course on this topic. This is so important that I want to make sure you walk away from this video uh, you know, knowing a lot about this topic. But anyways, let's suppose this was a graph, and I said, hey, does this graph, graph represent a function? Well, if you draw a vertical line anywhere through that graph, as long as it only crosses through that graph one time, and only one time, then that indeed represents a function, okay? So you can see here that my three points here, yeah, I could, I could throw uh, draw a vertical line here, it only crosses through once, a vertical line here, uh, one time. So, you know, it's a possible for a vertical line to just uh, go through this, uh, these points more than once. So this would pass the vertical line test, i.e. it does represent a function. So that's how we determine visually that this is in fact a function. But here's the deal, okay? Uh, we want to know whether this function now has an inverse. All right, so what functions what functions have an inverse functions? Well, there are special functions called one-to-one -one functions. One-to-one -one functions. So I'm like saying, okay, well, this is, uh, you know, we're talking about one-to-one -one functions. What is that? Well, that's a whole other topic. But basically, um, only one-to-one -one functions have an inverse function. Okay, so is there a test to determine whether a function is one-to-one? -one? Yes, it's called this. And if you're thinking HLT, what does that uh, mean? Well, it means the horizontal line test, okay? And it works exactly like the vertical line test. It's simply we're just going to use horizontal lines. So let's just go ahead and do this here. You can see if I draw a horizontal line anywhere through uh, this function, it's only going to cross these points one time. So that passes the horizontal line test, meaning 
that this function here, okay, this the, the thing that we just represented back there, okay, this function right here does in fact have an inverse, okay? And let's just go ahead and just show you this real, real fast, a uh, little bit more common type of prompt, for example. Let's suppose I had a line here, f of x is equal to, let's say, 2x plus 1, okay? So this would be a nice linear function. So is this a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test, right? So we can see that there. And in fact, it passes the horizontal line test, indicating it's a one-to-one -one function, mean, meaning that we could find the inverse function, which is something you're going to need to know how to do. Okay, so again, this is a big, big topic, and you need to know a lot about it. And right now, if your brain is kind of like, you know, hurting, you're kind of like, uh, like this, if you might be like, you know, like, man, this is just so much, you know, I'm kind of totally lost. Well, that's a good indication that you need to go back and review this stuff because there is quite a bit to know about this topic. All right, so we talked about functions, how to determine whether a function is one-to-one, -one, i.e., um, where that function has an inverse. Uh, we talked about the horizontal line test, the vertical line test. Now let's put this all together and answer the question. Okay, so let's go back to our original uh, mapping diagram representation of a function. So now we know why this, in fact, is a function. Here's the domain. Here's the range. This is all the set of inputs. This is all the set of outputs. Okay, so this was our problem, and we kind of verified using the vertical line test that, in fact, this is a function. And um, from there, we also tested the fact that this uh, function passes the horizontal line test, so it is a one-to-one -one function, so therefore it has an inverse. So what is the inverse? Well, here is the beautiful thing about mapping diagrams, okay? The inverse function, all you need to do is flip the domain and range, okay? So here's how it works. The domain of the function becomes the range of the inverse function, and the range of the function becomes the domain of the inverse function. Now, why that is, that's a whole other discussion, but you need to know that, okay? So basically, these flip-flop. So in the inverse function, we just simply flip these right here. So the domain of the inverse function is this set right here, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so I could have just easily kind of like uh, one, two, three, explain this, but a lot of you would have been confused because you don't have the underlying concepts down, uh, like one-to-one -one function, vertical line test, horizontal line test, etc. So again, functions is a huge topic in algebra, and you don't want to minimize the importance of mastering this, right? This is going to be a pretty typical type of problem that will show up in some sort of algebra one uh, test or algebra two test, etc. So if you need help with functions, all depending on what level of math you're in, if you're at the pre-algebra level, I have some introductory function concepts. Uh, if you're at the algebra one level, algebra two level, just go to those respective courses in my math help program. Even at the pre-calculus level, I get into more advanced function uh, concepts. Functions just continue to kind of, um, you know, they're in all, uh, basically, all high school level math courses, middle and high school, well, starting like really kind of like at the pre-algebra level and beyond, this topic's not going to go away and you need to know a lot about it. So hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.